Do you know that prayer itself can become an idol? That even you now elevate the length of prayer more than what it is that prayer is supposed to give you. That people go about priding themselves about how long they pray. Meanwhile, prayer is not a successful enterprise because you prayed long. It's a successful enterprise because of what happened to you when you prayed. The journey of prayer is supposed to be transformational. Because prayer is you making contact with God. So if you are consistently making contact with God, it should affect you. Your appetites should change. Your outlook to life should change. Your appetites, your passions, your desires, your likes should change. So how is it that you claim to be making consistent contact with God and your greed is as fresh as the day you met him? Your pride is still untouched. Your lust grows by the day. Now we can't even trust two Christians in courtship anymore. We can't trust them. Christians are using courtship now to hide sexual immorality. Our sisters have become endangered species, not outside in the church. Sometimes tears fall from my own eyes when I, when sisters share with me the things they go through from pastors. Bible study teacher. Two Sundays ago, a young lady walked into service. Um, two Wednesdays ago. And then after prayer meeting, she came to me. She said, I needed to see you. I have lost confidence in myself, lost faith. My spiritual life is in tatters. And once a sister starts talking like that, I know what the issue is. It was one of the leaders in fellowship. Who she went to? She went to submit herself for mentorship. The organa took an occasion to touch breast and molest the sister. The sister was so shocked that when the thing was happening, she didn't know what to say. Now went and started blaming herself. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me that did not do one thing. Meanwhile, if this brother holds microphone to lead prayer, It will seem like God came. You know what I told myself over the years? What I told myself over the years is, the pulpit eh, is God that determines what he will do. Hmm? There can be somebody in the congregation so desperate for God, so desperate for God, that God will just take advantage of that, that false individual. We just use the person as a potter just so he can meet that person. But it doesn't mean he validates that man's life. So a, a, a chronic fornicator can prophesy and he will be accurate. Not because God places a seal on his life, but because there's someone he needs to meet and he needs to take occasion of that individual. That's why my private life is more important to me than pulpit ministry. You don't know how I beg God before I came to teach you. I, because me, I know, I know myself that if it's to teach something, I can find something to teach. I can come here now and talk to you for four hours and then we strike the keyboard, power will come. I can do it. But the question is, what does the Lord want to say to you? And the Lord was telling me that he sent me to a few people this morning. And the question is, how did you become separated from the bridegroom? How did it happen? How come you are looking for him everywhere? Don't you know where you normally used to find him? Lovers have places where they know that if I go there, he will be there. They have secret hangouts. They have codes that they use to communicate. If he caught eye for me, I know sin I it all. How is it that she was lying on the bed and she suddenly realized, where is the one whom my heart loves? I need to ask a young man here, how come you've gone so far and yet it has been without Jesus? 
Where did you become separated from him? And you know the thing I'm speaking about, the reality I'm speaking about is that the bride can be going on as if everything is okay. This Shulamite, this her condition is a sign of spiritual health. She's not yet spiritually dead. She's drowsy at this point. She's overwhelmed with, 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 with spiritual malaria. She has not died yet. This is a sign that her pulse is still alive. She can sense that there is something missing. Some people have gotten to a point where they no longer know what is missing. They can't tell. They just know that the Christian life has become mechanical. They know all the phrases. They know how to dress and look like a believer. But that juice, that sweetness, that thing I was trying to find that morning. Do the people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about? When you lose that thing, it's very hard to get it back. I get messages from around the world, and many times the cry is Rev. I messed up, I lost God, and now I've been crying to get it back. Yes, I'm not the same. Marriages, eh? when you've been betrothed to the bridegroom and you attempt to defile yourself with a stranger, you will never come back the same. Never. That's how prayer lives have been lost. That's how people have disqualified themselves from the agenda of God. Bro, forgiveness is a small thing in the eye of God. In the matter of the bridegroom and the bride, forgiveness is a small matter. He will forgive you. I know as evangelists, we talk about the God of a second chance. I stopped saying that thing many years ago. Because I found out by my own personal experience that God is not the God of a second chance. Do you know how many second chances I blew? How many times I lay down and say, give me a second chance. I was say, take it. I blew it. I came back for a second chance. So I found out by experience, there is a God of another chance, and another chance, and another chance. But you will get to a point, and this is why Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It will get to a point that God will forgive you, but he can't use you for anything serious. He can't commit anything that is kingdom into your heart. So the matter is not forgiveness. The matter is ordination. It's destiny. It's destiny. He will forgive you. He loves you. There's nothing you can do to make him love you less. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. We don't pray because we want God to love us. We pray because we love God. Our praying, our our, our routines around our Christian faith are driven by a sense of love. That obligation we have is because we love God. We have seen the way he loves us and that love from God has elicited, has drawn a deep sense of love and reverence. So we engage in those things. Not to make God love us, but to show God that because of the way we feel about him, we have decided to order our lives in a certain way. So the matter is not forgiveness. In just in case you, are, you keep hearing the voice of guilt in your ear, it's not Jesus. It's Satan. The voice of condemnation is Satan. He will forgive you. But the matter is, can he continue with you on the matter of destiny? Can he entrust anything serious into you? If something as little as, my son, television is your right, oh, but I don't want it for you. You cannot even sacrifice that for the one whom you claim to love. How can he commit anything serious to you? She went into the cities. She went into the streets. Looking. It meant that she did not know. She could not identify where she lost him. That's the matter. So she was doing. Um, she was gambling. She didn't know exactly when he departed. Is a worrying state for a Christian. If you are that close to the bridegroom and you are such in, you are so much in love with him, you will know when he is displeased. 
the slightest sense of displeasure, you will know. So before it got to the point where he departed, it means that he had been, he had been expressing his displeasure and it has been ignored. It has been ignored several times. The matters of the bride and the bridegroom are private matters. Do you notice that the point where she began to feel this longing, where was she? She was on her bed. Probably prepared for her bridegroom. It was then she noticed the one whom she is longing for, the one who her body is prepared to receive, he can't be found. The worst thing that can happen to a believer is that you are alive, but you are living without his presence. You and God have nothing. Nothing deep, nothing secret, nothing intimate. 